Welcome back to the Comic Book Savant video channel. I'm your host, James Harris. This is the beginning of a new series that I wanted to start specifically for the YouTube channel. Um, I felt the need to kind of do something different, and I haven't really seen many people on YouTube kind of do a series similar to this, and this is going to be the Comic Book Collector's Guide. Um, me personally, I've been a fan of comics since I've been about two years old. I've had a lot of older um, family members over the years that would hand me down um, their old comics, worn comics, and that's kind of how I got into it. My cousins, I had a lot of cousins and uncles that were heavy in the comics and they just would pass them down. So as a kid, I just was surrounded by them and from the point I could read, I was always reading comics and that really started my love for comics and really how the comic books of uh, as you have known me or, or getting to know me kind of was created from um, just family members that love the medium that passed it down to me and I just kind of took it and ran with it. It's been a part of me as as long as I can remember and I'm a 42 year old man now and I remember being gifted and my mom telling me I was gifted comics way back when I was two. So this has been a 40 year uh, journey in my life when it relates to, to comic, comic books and just comics in general. Uh, so I figured it would be time to kind of um, kind of let some of that knowledge out you know to the, the general audience because we have so many people now due to the animation <clears throat> the television shows the multi-million billion dollar movie franchises that are getting in the comic books these these other parts of the comic book medium are pulling people into wanting to check out comic books for the first time and a lot of times people have a lot of questions where do i start how do i you know pick this up as a hobby so this series um, is just a running guide of some of the things that you might have questions about and hopefully i can help you guys on your journey into the bigger world of comic books so that's some some of the background on you know because some people might be wondering well how is this guy qualified to tell me what i need to know about comics because i'm a 40 year old comic fan well 40 year in comics fan and i have collected upon thousands upon thousands of comics um me personally i've kind of because it started <laughs> taking over my home my apartments wherever i kind of had lived and i kind of scaled back and i went green and primarily now outside of an exception of a few uh, things that are near and dear to me that i want in a physical copy i do mainly digital um, i buy digital comics but again i have 40 plus years experience in collecting comics so i want to pass that knowledge along and help anyone again that's beginning this journey of uh, comic book collecting and it's, it's nothing special and uh, no special hoops you need to jump through and entering that world of being a comic books uh, comic book collector or even being a comic book fan it mainly just starts with what do you like you know and that's why I always if someone asks me where do I start or where do I begin start with something that you like if you see arrow on the CW and you're interested about Arrow, then that's where your starting point is. Um, and comic books are mainly, you know, you'll hear a lot of people say this run is better than another, and it's better than another, and it's better than another. It's all subjective. It's, there's no wrong place to start. You know, it's always good if you're gonna, you know, if you see a film and you're familiar with a particular character, say through the MCU films or the CW TV shows or something like that, that you just go into a comic book store. Don't be intimidated. Like, you know, Google your local area if you don't already know where a local comic sh shop is and just go in and walk through and see what books are currently available and use that as a starting point the comic book medium is like none other because it is just it's very much visual and you know as a kid when i used to go in i saw what covers were pretty and like that, that's what i grabbed and i kind of explored and built up as i tried certain things you're going to try certain books that you're going to love you're going to try other books that you're like not so much but that's a part of the, the process that makes it so fun and exploring the realm because there's so much out there there are literally hundreds of comic books printed per month 
And that number has grown. You know, I think about when I was, you know, in my early teens, you might have had 50 books published a month. There are literally hundreds of books that hit the, the comic book stores week in and week out. So, you know, that literally is hundreds per month. So uh, it's no right or wrong selection about it. But if you want to get into collecting, start with what you like first, and then you will slowly, as you try things, you'll expand, uh, expand out. A friend of mine, uh, his name is Heath Holland. He's a host of uh, the YouTube channel Serial at Midnight. I'm going to put links down below. He did a great video on five tips in collecting physical media and comic books would fall under that and some and he time to time covers comics and just collecting all types of physical media even toys and so forth because comics is is huge so it's, it's a lot of different things in that medium with comics is you can collect the comics themselves um original artwork uh toys movie prop replicas um, statues. There's it's so many things that fall under that umbrella. And so you don't have to be pigeonholed in at all. You can, when, you know, over the years of being a comic book fan, I've collected all of the above. At one point, I had multiple statues. Um, I had some, you know, props. I've had, like, if I've caught, you know, went to a toy store or went to a comic shop and seen a really cool action figure based on a character that I liked, I would pick up. So again, just remember, there are no wrong answers when you're going down the path of being a comic book fan and getting into the larger world of collecting comics. There's no wrong answers. It's just what you enjoy. You start with what you enjoy and you expand out from, from there uh, again. But first step is finding a comic shop or it's plenty of online uh, resources. You have places like um, Amazon where you can order trade paperbacks. You can even order individual issues. You can go through to through a site like Comixology where you can buy uh, comics digitally. Um, so it just depends what path works best for you. For me, because at a point, literally, I had thousands upon thousands of comics. I had a walk-in closet that was full of comics. I had, um, <clears throat> at the heaviest point, I had four bookshelves in my my office space where I would like record my podcast and and do videos while well, I wasn't doing videos there but when I recorded my podcast that my, my office workspace my home office workspace I literally had um four full-size bookcases and a half bookcase that was full filled with trade paperbacks hardcovers comics statues you know and I had a walk-in closet full of long boxes full of comics as well and it just became overwhelming because I start stopped having room for clothes and different things like that because it was so filled uh with comics and I kind of personally had an epiphany as I um went on my honeymoon I got married for the second time uh, back in uh, 2010 and I wanted to take some comics to read so you know I try to figure out maybe like you know I was going to be gone for like 7 to 10 days I, I want to say so then I packed like about 10 comp tar covers and trade paperbacks and it was so heavy lugging it around everywhere and trying to go through customs and I was like oh my god it was like like I was getting hernia man it was like just killing me and I was like man it has to be an easier way to do this and I knew about uh, comicsology and you know kind of after having that experience of like traveling and not knowing what you might be in the mood to read at any given time where you could just have it on the digital you could have hundreds of comics on your phone or you know or your tablet to easily access you know made me kind of think about it changing up but that just worked for me it's nothing wrong with having physical media if you're a homeowner and like you have a dedicated space where you want to put your comics on display or your trade paperbacks there's nothing wrong with that it's it you know it's going to be different for everyone for me it start just being easier for me to go digital because i wanted the convenience of being able to read whatever i wanted whenever i wanted no matter where i was at so it kind of was just the best move for me at that point uh, but that's not everyone's story. Some people have dedicated, huge dedicated spaces that, you know, they can have a, you know, and I've seen great comic book, you know, rooms where they have like the old school spinner racks or like I did. And I loved having 
the, you know, all the hard covers and, and um, having all the bookcases and, you know, that feel in a home office to be able to grab a, a trade or a hard cover off the shelf and just read it. But it was going to work differently for everyone else. It's a, it's, it's a preference thing. So, you know, you don't just because I go digital don't, doesn't mean that that's something that you have to do. Another thing I just wanted to make sure, what do you prefer to collect? Um, are you going to collect single issues? Are you going to collect um, a mixture of single issues combined with uh, trade paperbacks and hardcovers? Um, is again, it's, it's certain things, and I did a mixture of both. It was just certain books that I really enjoyed. I wanted to read month to month as the issues came out. Some people like to wait for the trade. Normally, trades are either going to be collected um, in trade paperback. They're normally six. Um, six issue arcs that are collected in a trade paperback then they'll sometimes they'll migrate over and they'll do a hardcover which is a year's worth of stories or 12 issues or two story arcs collected in a hardcover um then you get into things like absolute editions which are more uh specialty like uh D this is their absolute editions are done by dc comics where they take some of their greatest stories of all time and they print them in this wonderful oversized prestige format and they're they're really collectors items you know and they pick like the top stories like kingdom come batman hush batman and long halloween and they're beautiful bound slip case editions that you know like if you're really a collector and you love that particular story you, you those are things that you want to buy now those are pricey items you don't get those cheap these things can cost upwards of a hundred dollars you can find sites online where you can get them heavily discounted getting them you know 30 40 sometimes if you're lucky even 50 percent off um but retail they can be upwards of a hundred dollars and sometimes even more um because some of them are out of print so they're harder to find so you kind of have to go you'll see a secondary market a seller market maybe amazon doesn't sell it directly but they have people that list items on there and you can see that they could be very pricey especially if they're those items are out of print but what most of the comic book publishers are doing now they're going back and printing these printing these special editions up more to kind of cut down that secondary market that they're they're accessible to more people which are great and one last thing in this first episode that i definitely want to make clear to to cover is your motivation behind collecting if you start becoming a fan of comics because of the the movies and it's just a hobby that you want to explore do it for the love of it you know it was a period during the you know the the um mid and late 90s where in the early 2000s where people were you know were were you know buying comics like we're gonna buy these number one issues and these chrome covers and all this thing it was a speculator's market and people bought comics not for the love of them just so they thought they could make money off of them and that kind of backfired on a lot of people because um the market kind of folded in on itself so those books that people bought to try to make a living off of um, didn't have the value that they thought they were going to have. So if you're doing it like as a speculation type thing, it's a very risky proposition. Can you do it? People have and have been successful with it, but more times than not, they're not very successful. So, if, you know, I always feel like when you're going into a hobby like this, because it can be quite an expensive hobby to get into that you do it that is something that you're gonna actually enjoy and something that you want to do um not that you're motivated by other motives outside of reading the comics having a good time um and exploring the medium itself and, and just having fun with it um that to me is always what's most important enjoying the medium enjoying learning about the universes and the different characters and their affiliations that's where the fun comes from in reading comic books and then seeing them adapted into film on tv and see the similarities and seeing uh characters that are lesser known characters get spotlight it's it's a really fun experience once you dive deep into it but like i said this is just the first episode of many uh, again, this is just uh, getting started um, 
episode in this first edition. So those are the kind of things that I just wanted to touch base on with you. It'll be more coming. Um, I definitely will be putting out at least one of these episodes a month, more frequently if you want. It's all based on your guys' feedback. This is kind of the pilot test episode of comic book, the Comic Book Collector's Guide. So if you do like it, let me know in the, um, in the comment section below. Uh, also, don't forget to give the video a thumbs up like share subscribe if you haven't already also if um, you like click the bell notification down at the bottom it'll let you know when uh the, the next episode is available for you guys to check out but that's all i have for you in this first episode like i said before definitely check out the um the link that i'm gonna have down and down below for serial at midnight the top five tips for collecting physical media it kind of piggybacks off things that i'm saying here and gives you some more in detail tips when collecting something like comics or any kind of physical media so definitely if you have a moment check that out check out my boy heath he does great work over at serial at midnight so definitely check that out and give him a shout out tell him that you heard about his um his youtube channel from over here he'll greatly appreciate it we um we've gone we go back a long way so um definitely check that out when you have a chance and i'll see you guys next time for another episode of comic book savant you guys take care have a good week and i will see you soon